All right. Welcome this evening. I'm going to be all over the place, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Patrick Dean, and uh, there's so much chaos and stuff going on around this coronavirus. And um, I've been doing leadership and team building trainings for a long time. And I think that this, uh, these times that we're in right now is an incredible opportunity to learn and to step up our ability to be leaders. So the purpose and the conversation that I want to have with you tonight, uh, as I said, all over the place, because there's so much chaos and there's so much information going on that I try to, I'm going to try to get it down to what I want to share and what I want to um, end up with here is uh, talking about us being better leaders, leaders in our community and leaders in our family and leaders um, uh, with our friends and leaders at our job. And I think that this time right now requires some leadership because it would be certainly easy to drop into a place of adding to the chaos and adding to the problem and adding to the misinformation and all the stuff that's going on. So I want to talk just for a very few minutes with you about how we can do that. Um, I took a class at Stanford University a little while ago, and uh, I had an incredible opportunity to, um, to be with entrepreneurs, uh, the guy that started Airbnb and the guy that started the um, uh, uh, Uber and uh, some of the gentlemen that were the founders of Google and all of them. They were live there talking to us. And this was online training, but they were live talking to us. And I thought one of the most interesting things they shared was being an entrepreneur. And I'm going to connect this with the idea of leadership and the idea of what's going on in the world right now uh, in just a second. But I wanted to tell you uh, this valuable thing that I learned about leadership. And what they talked about was they talked about how difficult it was in the beginning, in starting up, for them to show up at work every single day and have their attitude straight, have their attitude about energy, have their attitude about uh, possibility and about knowledge and have their, uh, have their attitude about what they can contribute and keep uh, and be the center of a context of something that they were developing from nothing. And they shared that how, how many times all of, the, all of the obstacles that they had in founding these businesses would come up and there would be doubts in their mind. But they said one of the most important things about working with people and about leading people uh, is the fact of how you show up and your attitude and who you are. And oftentimes that, uh, that means that we take a look at some of the doubts that we have and some of the negativity that we have, which are all natural and normal, and that we look at that in such a way it, of, um, of looking at how we affect other people. So the idea of mastering yourself and mastering fear uh, around all this stuff is first look at what we're bringing to the game, what we're bringing to the people around us. Now, I have worked for many years with something and developed something that I call the theory of space. And that's not about space travel. What it is, is about the fact that uh, who we are as human beings, every moment creates an experience, creates a permission for other people. We're like, it's like a vacuum, you know, everything rushes in to a vacuum. And for us, we are a place in which our attitude and how we carry ourselves and how we are permissions other people to experience the same things. So, in other words, if we show up and if we step into our own courage and our own authenticity and our own honesty and our own belief and our own forward momentum, and if we step into qualities, all of those qualities, what we actually do is we give people permission around us to experience and feel those same qualities. A courageous person such as yourself, if you operate from that courage, you're going to find more people around you operating from courage and almost not knowing why. And so leadership in actuality is the realization that you affect people every single moment. Now, most people think leadership, of course, is uh, about authority. 
You have an authority. You have a rank. You have a badge. You have a privilege. You have a, a title. You have something that's given to you. So you have authority over other people. And that's authority, but it is not leadership. Leadership, from my point of view, is the realization that who you are either uh, takes away from the situation or adds to the chaos or adds to the problem or adds to the negativity or who you are and how you show up brings calmness and forward momentum. And that is one of the biggest ways that I think that we can be of service to everybody right now with all this news about this virus. There's so much uncertainty about it. There's so much uh, uh, that we don't know that that gives us that feeling of, of um, uh, uh, fear that comes up for all of us about what's happening. But if we start to show up every day and be informed, be knowledgeable, have some great energy, have some forward momentum, know that we're going to get through this that will contribute to the actual experience of other people stepping up into their strength from my point of view. So one of the things here that we can do, all of us, that I want to commit to you that I'm going to step into is the idea of stepping up my game and believing and encourage. And so uh, for me, my gosh, uh, I my whole purpose in life is, is creating a world that works for everyone, creating leaders, creating uh, compassion in the world. And every single training that I have has been postponed. Every live training that I have, uh, uh, co my corporate contracts on, on hold, contracts in Australia and contracts in Guam and other places that I am supposed to travel to, everything on hold. So the idea that my cash flow... <laughs> is reduced uh, to um, my clients, which I love my clients and I love doing online. And I'll tell you about a solution that we're coming up with right now, uh, myself and a, a, another a brilliant woman. We're gonna, I'm gonna tell, I'll tell you about this at the end, but all that stuff's happening to me and I could let that get me uh, very easily, but I just don't think it serves my wife, Nancy. It doesn't serve my son, Zachary. It doesn't serve my friends. Uh, to hang out in that. Now, the next thing I think, so attitude, your attitude is so critical and so powerful. And so you're the determining factor in that experience. And I'm not talking about hiding stuff or suppressing stuff, but what I'm talking about is you know, you know that we're going to get through this. The time frame, how it looks, what happens, we don't know. But this too shall pass because we've seen these things pass before. So um, this is one thing that we can be sure of and step into this so we can be effective in finding solution and effective in, in uh, leading the people around us, as I have said. So um, attitude. Next thing. Um, all right. This whole thing about the uh, social media, the press, the newspapers. This, this stuff, um, you have to be able to curate your intake of this information. I find myself getting really caught up and getting, uh, reading more and more details about it because it's interesting. But after a while, you can start to sift through the science and really find out about what's going on. You know, uh, I read something interesting the other day. And it was that uh, last year, um, uh, 35 million people got the flu last year in the United States. And of those, uh, 400,000 approximately were um, hospitalized and about 29,000 people died of the flu. Most of them immune compromised or elderly or had other diseases going on at the same time. So... Um, as you take in statistics like that, there was something that was missing from what I told you. And this is what you've got to look for. So I gave you that statistic about 35 million people having the nor having uh, the, the, uh, a normal strain of the flu. What you need to know is how many people there are in the country so you can have a comparison about what's going on. So you have to be able to be a scientist when you listen 
to this information and bounce it off. So there are 300, uh, 327 million people in the United States, 327 million. And when statistics are all over the place, you can start comparing. So, so take on statistics in comparison to other things. Demand the whole picture. Okay, so headlines that are misleading or things that are misleading, like uh, it is revealed as or it came from or some expert uh, really take a look at that stuff and start f throwing it out the window. If er if the source is vague, remember the process, the, what newspapers are up to, what social media is up to is getting your attention. You have a certain amount of attention. So it seems the more negative it is, the more attention you'll give to it. So really, if you want the information, you can get that in a fairly short time and then turn off your media and go to work. So any information that gives you action or has an action that you can take is powerful information. Information such as uh, there was a headline uh, two days ago, China, uh, 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 China finds uh, China testing cure uh, on nurses and it seems like the cure is working. Well, that was complete fabrication and there was nothing b backing that. There was no scientists. There was no follow up on it at all. It was a kind of the bogus headlines that we're getting. So be a good scientist, be really in there and take a look at where and what the source is, you know, and um, um, remember, we're all fifth graders at heart. <laughs> we all have this fifth grader in it, in us. And what I mean by that is that we all like the idea at some level, at the very deepest part of us, that the school is shut down. Or something different is going to happen. Or maybe this will be a change for me. Or maybe I can get away from something or, 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 or out of something. I think that that little thing lives in us as well. So there's this whole thing about how we see uh, the news that way. And then we get into the adult part, which is, well, it's me. I don't, I've lost my income. I don't know what I'm going to do and all that, which are legitimate things to worry about. But... Uh, most of the leaders I know will only give a certain amount of their time to worry about stuff. So that's a 30 minute window. You can get up in the morning or perhaps and just do 30 minutes of worry. And then let's step into some action. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Brett Lumpkin, amazing guy. He's in, uh, one of the leaders in my men's trainings that I've been doing. And he, uh, he and some other people went out and they put together some care packages. He lives in a, uh, re a, a retirement community. And so he took these packages around and simply left them on the front porch of people. And the purpose of that was not so much um, the care packages themselves, but to still let people know who were isolated, that other people were thinking about them. That is so powerful. What a great thing to do. People feel isolated and they feel fearful. And if you're able in some way to alleviate that, to reach out and alleviate that in some way, um, do that. That's called action. And the best way to get rid of worry in your life is the experience of action, any kind of action. So you guys, watch your attitude, okay? B remember what you're bringing to your friends, to the game, to the people around you. The next thing is curtail your in your your the input of crap out there that's going to come in and curate it in such a way that you're informed, but it's not going to rule your life. Now, um, let's see. The last thing I wanted to talk about here uh, was three things that we can do to take care of ourselves, and this is called the three S's. And this is from uh, uh, doctor, a guy, uh, Dr. Drew Pinsky. He's a, a, a doctor that does uh, social media and he works on social media and he's very well informed. He's been on President's Council and all kinds of stuff. And he was talking about the three S's. I don't think he developed this, but he was passing it on to us. And here's what the three S's are of taking care of ourselves. Um, number one is sugar. <laughs> uh I'm serious about this. He said that 
the amount of sugar intake that we the 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 amount of sugar that we pour into our bodies in different ways uh, to relieve immediate stress or to get a kind of a high. He says you have to really really be careful of the amount of sugar. So if you re- if you want to take care of yourself and you want to have uh, a good immune a good immune system for these times, he said that we got to limit the amount of sugar we're putting in our body. Now I'm not a nutritionist, but it sounds right to me because I certainly. Um, you know, I get, get, get off on this stuff, uh, just like, uh, probably, or maybe some of you, you do as well. So the first thing is now to watch our nutrition. If we're going to be better leaders, if we're going to make a difference out there, we want to be as healthy as we possibly can be. So that's one thing is watch what you're eating. This is a great time to challenge ourselves to do that. So the second thing is, is stress. Now, in the idea of monitoring, managing stress, I want to, I would like to talk about the difference between stress and pressure. Uh, my friend, Brian Klimmer, uh, used to say that pressure is the way the world works. If engines work on pressure, uh, tires work on pressure, uh, the world works on pressure. Pressure is the difference between where we are now and where we want to be. And that gap creates pressure and that pressure kind of moves us forward. It keeps us motivated and working. Stress, however, is a, is a, is a mindset. Stress is usually around resistance. We, uh, we put ourselves under stress because we don't like what we have to do. So our, uh, we put, our, put ourselves into resistance and that resistance to the actual actions we have to take or should take or could take, that really creates um, uh, uh, a, a bad situation in how we think and, and uh, it affects our health and everything else. So know that stress, a lot of stress is uh, based in resisting what we could do or should do. So um, remember that one and maybe just a little bit you can understand that pressure works. It's part of the game. And the other part of it is you don't have to put all this um, uh, negativity on it or resistance on it or other kinds of uh, other kinds of thinking that creates a feeling of worry. So just know the difference between stress and pressure. And that could be a great start there. And finally, getting enough sleep, which is really turning off some of the electronics and doing some reading or sitting down or meditation or whatever it is for you. I'm certainly not an expert in this at all. You pro- all of you probably have some great suggestions in how to take care of yourself, especially getting enough st- um, sleep. So the three S's are, sh- are sugar intake, stress, and sleep. <laughs> It sounds very practical and all we need is the commitment and the attitude to go with it and a good time to challenge ourselves. I think, you know, I'm spending more time uh, on the spin bike and doing so uh, and doing that. So, all right. So finally, a uh, solution is uh, for you to step up your leadership, to be in the world in such a way that you make the difference that you're committed to make. And uh, I wanted to share with you the last thing is is the idea of all these um, uh, uh, postponements of live trainings. I don't know when they're, we're, when we're going to step up again, but myself and a woman named Mary Jo Hilliker, an amazing leader, uh, she works with Manatech, she works with uh, people in transformational work. We're developing the world's first online transformational training that we can do with people all over the world and it will be an advanced training in other words it'll be about what you're creating every moment because this is about when it comes to the bottom line is everything around you you're creating your experience so what you're doing and what you're up to right now and your thinking and your actions and your decisions are creating my decisions are creating everything in our life. I mean, I don't know that there's a way to get away from it. I certainly would like to find uh, somebody I can blame, but there is nobody. So there is only us. I wish somebody in a white horse was going to ride in, but obviously that's not going to happen. We've got to step up to leadership in a way that, you know, we teach the kids to do that as well. So this, uh, these are times of incredible uncertainty, and there are also times of incredible opportunity. So you guys, you're, you're it. Go out and make the difference you were born to make. Thanks, and we will see you on the next Facebook Live and get some progress on all of this stuff.
Thank you and good evening.